Hi, bumblebees. Today, I am here to teach you how to sell your very first fursuit and how to market yourself in a community saturated in smaller, up-and-coming fursuit makers. Let's start off with number one, where to sell your suit. There's plenty of places online today where you can sell fursuits or fursuit parts. The most common place suits are sold nowadays is the dealer's den. Alternatively, there's also fur buy. However, as the years have gone on, it's not really used as often. If you aren't too keen on spending a dollar to set up a seller account on the dealer's den, there's always the classic social media approach for selling your suit. Lots of furries turn to furry Facebook groups, Instagram, Amino, Etsy, and even eBay to sell their suits. Although I highly recommend the dealer's den. It's quite easy to make listings on the website and once you've made a sale, you're able to handle the processing of the payment so that the buyer can pay in their preferred way. When it comes to payment though, be sure you've read through the maker's TOS and if you're selling a suit, be sure to have a TOS so that the buyer knows what to expect when buying a suit from you. Be sure you look into their TOS to see if they accept refunds and check local or country laws when buying or selling suits, as well since in some countries, like Germany, after money has been sent, as long as it was for a custom tailored item, the maker does not have to refund the buyer if they decide they indeed want a refund. Do be careful with scammers though. I would hope none of you are scammers and are all good little bumblebees. Even though this video is about how to sell your suit, I thought it would be a good idea to mention that if you're buying a suit, you should always check into a maker and be sure that they do actually own the suit and that the description of the suit is accurate and not faked. Unfortunately, there are scammers in the community who may not necessarily care about others or making suits and only care for a quick profit. Number two, photos. Now that you know where to sell your suit, you need pictures. I see too many listings on the daily that don't have the nicest photos, and I don't mean camera quality. What I mean is I see pictures on these listings with the fursuit laying on the bathroom floor, outside in the dirt, or in areas with really bad lighting. When you take photos for a listing, you typically want the best possible lighting in a clean environment and either on a base or a real person. It makes your listing look a lot nicer when you take the time to get nice photos. If a potential buyer views your listing and you have the suit in a dark place or somewhere dirty, chances are no one is going to buy it. One, because they literally can't see the exact colors or details very well, and two, because, well, it's in a dirty place. No one wants to buy a suit that was thrown on the ground or was laying near your toilet. If you intend to take photos outside, at least lay a blanket down to keep the suit clean or find a more appropriate place for said photos. Also, be sure to always take up-to-date photos. Don't use old photos because the suit looked nicer then. Be honest with your listing and show how the suit currently looks. Number three, be honest. Now you have photos. Great! Next is complete and total honesty. Be upfront about the suit and the condition it's in. If the suit has close shave spots, say that. If it has glue spots on the fur, how the ventilation is, what size the head will fit, if the paws or hooves are lined and cuffed, how the vision in the suit is, if it's new or if it has been refurbished, and what extra features it has, etc. No matter what, you always need to state any flaws the suit has, along with any features that may be important to the buyer. When there isn't much information on the suit listing, it makes it hard for someone to justify spending their money on something that they aren't sure of the condition of or if it'll even fit them. Let potential buyers know that you're being honest about its condition and that you are willing to give more photos of problem areas or discuss the suit in private DMs. I personally always make sure to put a link to my Twitter and Instagram on a listing to give potential buyers an easier place to message me about the suit as the dealer's den is a bit tedious in that aspect and can feel like sending email after email instead of quick messages. Number four, pricing. Pricing is something I see a lot of makers struggle with and it's something I thought I should touch on briefly. When it comes to pricing, you need to make sure you aren't selling the suit for too much or too little. Don't sell your first ever suit for something pricey as chances are your first ever suit won't be too great and depending on materials, may not be very high quality either. 
I should also mention that you shouldn't just make one suit and then start doing commissions. It should go without saying that your first suit will always be more of a practice suit rather than a masterpiece. I honestly recommend you make at least four to five suits before you start doing commissions. Your first few suits don't need to be perfect and should be used as a learning experience. When you start doing commissions or just selling pre-mades, keep in mind how much your materials were, how much time you spent making it, and the quality of suits you make. Once you've figured this all in, you should be charging enough for the suit that you've made back the money and materials spent, time taken, and your skills. As your skills improve, you can start raising your prices and buying higher quality materials and spending more time on your techniques and development of your style. Also, if you guys want a more in-depth video about this topic or any of the others covered in this video, do let me know in the comments below. Number five, cleaned and brushed. This is a short point and one I don't think I need to explain much about. Before you even listed the suit, it should go without saying that it needs to be properly brushed and cleaned, especially if the suit is older or refurbished. No one wants to buy a suit only to get it and see how dirty parts of it are from previous wears, or get a suit with matted or heavily unbrushed fur. It looks awful and feels just as bad, so be sure to do proper maintenance on the suit you're preparing to sell. Number 6. How to Advertise so the listing is up, but now what do you do? A great question. Just having your listing up won't typically sell a suit. You need to get the word out about your suit. This means you need to post literally everywhere you can. I'm talking about Fursuit Maker Amino, Furry Amino, Furry Facebook groups, Instagram, Twitter, Fur Affinity, Telegram groups, and Discord groups relating to or selling furry art things, of course. Speaking of Discord groups, quick promo, but if you guys like meeting and chatting with other furries and want to show off your art or ask questions about fursuit making, join my Discord server. <laughs> the join link will be in the description below and I'll plop it on screen too, so can't wait to see you guys there. Anyway, literally anywhere you can think of and any social media platform you have, because being able to get the word out about the suit helps draw potential buyers in. It also helps to post about the suit while it's in the making, always stating that it's a pre-made and that it will be for sale on the dealer's den once finished. This will hype others up about the suit and get people ready to click the auction link to it as quick as possible once up. Unfortunately, after it's been advertised, there's not much you can do except wait and continually advertise each week that it's up. As you sell more suits and gain more followers, it'll be easy to sell suits as you'll have a bigger reach and lots of other happy customers to vouch for you and your product. It also goes without saying, but as time goes on, you'll start to develop your own style, which is the main thing that will help you stand out in the crowd of emerging suit makers. Number seven, shipping. And lastly, we have shipping. When it comes to shipping, you need to be sure to inform buyers of how you charge for shipping and if there are any extra costs. Personally, I charge for shipping after the completion of a suit since I'm never too sure how much it may cost me to ship as prices vary on the weight of the box and the box size. However, this has caused me to run into a few people who get upset at me and act as if I'm overcharging for a suit or suit part just because they think they've already paid for it completely. But in reality, they've only paid for the product, not the postage for it. Please guys, specify this to your buyers if you choose to do it this way so as to not upset anyone. And be sure to keep documentation of them agreeing to your TOS and what you've stated about shipping. Or in short, always have your receipts. Be sure to let potential buyers know if you ship worldwide or only within your country as well since most of the time to ship overseas you'll need a customs form or you may have to pay extra charges which could cost quite a bit more than they can afford. I also cannot stress this last point enough but please do not cram a suit into a box that's too small as you can potentially cause the foam to bend into weird shapes and become a bit deformed from shipping. If you're shipping a resin or 3D printed head, do be sure to pad it as much as possible as too hard a hit can shatter or break the head and all your hard work. So always be sure to pick a strong, sturdy box, tape it well, and pad the suit you're shipping if it's not foam. 
So, what do you say, bumblebees? Did this help you sell your suit? Let me know if this was helpful below, and again, please do let me know if you'd like me to elaborate on any of these topics more in depth. I have plenty I could share about some of these, especially when it comes to marketing and putting yourself out there. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to Beast Labs Suits on Twitter for giving me a few extra points to put in this video for you guys. I really do recommend checking them out. They're a German fursuit maker that makes super cute toonie suits. So if you're looking for a new maker to follow, definitely check out what they have to offer. If you guys want to see a more in-depth video about anything I discuss, do let me know once again in the comments below. If you made it this far and watched my whole video, then I just want to take a moment to thank you as always. Your support means a lot to me. If you want to keep up with what I'm doing outside of YouTube, I'll be sure to leave links below to my Instagram and my Twitter. If you want to support me in other ways or see me at your next convention, whenever that is, then please consider checking out my Patreon. I offer all sorts of cool rewards and tutorials. Just go to www.patreon.com forward slash klovesbunnies. All it takes is a dollar to access most of my behind the scenes content. In-depth tutorials are offered at the $5 tier. And if I end up meeting both my goals, not only will you guys be helping me fund my next convention trip to see y'all, but you'll also be helping me afford to live and feed my babies here on the farm. Also be sure to check out my merch I offer on Redbubble and Store Envy. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching y'all and till next time this is Queen Bee buzzing out. See you later guys.